And Janelle and I had been in a relationship for about two years and then we broke up and there was a real time of turmoil. Welcome back, everybody. Today is Monday of the third full week of Lent. And you made it to the weekend. It's Monday. Here we go. We continue to reflect upon Father Fernandez's In Conversations with God, sharing with you what stood out to us and why our topic is docility to the Holy Spirit and... Good dispositions good... for meeting Jesus. All right. So we want to meet Jesus. Let's <laughs> chat about it. Jesus did not find the necessary dispositions in his hearers in the land where he was brought up. And so he did not work any miracles there. So what I find interesting about this quote is it reminded me of how um, I'm working through the Baltimore Catechism with our son. And one of the questions talks about grace and is grace always available during the sacraments? This is exactly what it says. Do the sacraments always give grace? The sacraments always give grace if we receive them in the right dispositions. So just like it is written in scripture, how Christ didn't find anybody with the proper disposition, and so he never produced any miracles. And it also talks about, um, even in the Old Testament with Naaman, how he had leprosy, and then the prophet Elisha came and, you know, he had to go and wash in the water. The thing is, at that time, there were so many people with leprosy, but why weren't those people cured? And it just talks about the disposition of the people. And I just found that really interesting. Like God's grace is always available for everybody, regardless to where we are, our nationality, you know, our upbringing, whatever. It's available to all of us, but is our disposition right? Right. So we, we should not think that holiness is reserved for really smart people. Mm -hmm. You know, those who have a deep theological grasp on the Catholic Church's teaching. It's important to know the Catholic Church's teaching. But if we were just honest, some people have a greater ability to understand theological matters than others. I would say mine is l much lower than some of those other YouTubers out there. I have a simple mind, friends, and I just want to live a simple life, a simple spirituality. Uh, so our intellectual ability doesn't determine our interior disposition. But there's something about the heart that we have to realize. It's a, it's a mysterious thing. The attitude by which we come to God, and I'm not saying that we don't form ourselves at all. I'm not saying that at all. But don't discount yourself out because you feel like you don't know much. You're here. You're a seeker. And what does Jesus say about seekers? Those who seek will find. In matters of the soul, we are not our own best advisors, as we are not our own good doctors. Normally, our Lord makes use of other people. Christ himself called St. Paul and spoke to him. He could have revealed to Paul there and then the route to holiness, but he preferred to direct him to Ananias, so that from his lips would Paul learn the truth. Rise up, enter into the city, and you will be told what you ought to do. God uses other people to help direct us. You know, for me personally, it just seems like it would make, be more logical for God to just be like, okay, do this, then this, then this, then this. <laughs> you know, just lay it all out. But obviously he's got a greater mastermind plan in all of this and he uses other people. And part of being docile to the workings of God in our life is to recognize this truth. Instead of thinking, I can do this all on my own. All I need to do is just plug into Ken and Janelle on YouTube and live <laughs> no. my life by myself. Yeah. We, we're made for community, friends. Mm. We're, and, and God will use our relationships to speak to us. If we ignore that, we're going to be lacking in, an, in one area of our life, in, in our spiritual life. So we need community. No such thing as Lone Ranger Christians. I want to give you a practical example of this in my own life. When it came to discerning my vocation, there was a period of time where I just I didn't know what God was calling me to and Janelle and I had been in a relationship for about two years and then mm -hmm. we broke up mm -hmm. and there was a real time of turmoil in my my heart and I had come to a position where I knew that I loved Janelle I knew that I wanted to be with Janelle mm -hmm. but I I didn't know if it was God's will and so I was warring with this by myself. I didn't, wasn't talking to anyone. And, and then I made an appointment with a, a, a wonderful priest. He's also a wonderful friend. And I sat down with him and I said, Father, you know, I, I love Janelle. And I want to be with Janelle. I, I want to marry her. But I, I don't know if this is God's will. And he looked at me and says, well, if you ask her and she says no, it will be pretty clear. <laughs> 
And it was just that simple insight of common sense. Say, look, if that's your heart, go for it. Talk to her. And if she says no, God will reveal his will through that circumstance. But it took that priest, that conversation with that priest for me to approach Janelle. Mm. See, this is how God will work. He will use people. And sometimes those decisions that we're making, those big decisions in life, wow, you can't make those things by yourself. You got to plug in. Mm -hmm. good holy priest in spiritual direction sometimes we might not have those opportunities maybe those priests in our lives well another thing could be just a good spiritual friend where you can sit down and have those conversations and ask this question what's god doing in your life or you're able to share with your friend something that you're struggling with but you know those kind of friends are really special too then not every friendship is like that where you're both of the like mind both love the fullness of faith so you got to hang on to those friends but God will use those conversations also to, to speak to mm -hmm. you. Uh, I, I really believe this too, that every person is my superior in some way. There's always something that I can learn from, from somebody in conversation. So you should never discount a person. Oh, this person has nothing to offer me. No, it's, it's sometimes it's those most unexpected relationships that God uses the most powerfully. And one cannot be docile if he insists on being stubborn, obstinate, incapable of assimilating an idea different from those he already holds, or which he has got into his head as a result of some negative experience when he has not counted on the help of grace. Pride makes one incapable of docility, for in order to understand, one has to be convinced that there are still things which are outside our experience, and that we need someone to point them out to us. To achieve spiritual improvement, we have to realize that we are not as good as God expects us to be. So can we acknowledge that sometimes there's things we need to know that are outside of our experience that God will point out to us through another person? Mm -hmm. We have got so used to being self-sufficient in our culture or the illusion of self sufficient for example with these things we think that everything that we need to know is at a click of a finger we do the google search and there you have the information but information is not revelation and what i mean by revelation is that nugget of truth that god deposits within the heart that happens by grace and so sometimes it will happen by the google search other times it will be spending time with the word but other times it's with com other people in conversation about spiritual matters that we're warring with. I want you to consider one thing about the Olympics, the 100 meter race. We have the fastest men in the world all lined up. What do each one of those men have in common? Something very unique to their discipline. They all came with a coach. There's not one who's lined up in those blocks that came by themselves. They had a team that supported them and they had a, a main coach that coached them. And why is that coach so important? Well, if you're on the track and you're busting out of those blocks, you have another set of eyes that's looking at you, correcting, fine tuning those little movements and those corrections are necessary in order to become the world champion. The sprinter in the action of busting out of those blocks, racing, is not able to do an accurate self-assessment of his performance. He needs the outside eyes looking upon himself to make those fine-tuned adjustments. And so it is in the spiritual life. Often this happens in the confessional when we have a regular confessor. He's able to recognize patterns of sin and make a little fine-tuned adjustment with us and say, mm -hmm. hey, have you considered this? Other times, again, it's a good, solid Christian friendship where you're able to talk about your weaknesses mm -hmm. and the other person is able to give you some advice. Mm -hmm. It takes a little bit of humility to be able to share that. Trust, you have to be vulnerable, and an openness to that, mm -hmm. knowing that that person who's hearing you has your best in mind. Mm -hmm. Or even an official spiritual director. Yes. It can also happen in a spousal relationship mm -hmm. where Janelle will come to me and point out something once in a <laughs> while, you know, and in a loving, kind way. And th that's very useful. 
I would add though that it's also good to have something like that outside of marriage because in one sense in marriage the two become one flesh and in one sense you're both together in the starting blocks <laughs> <laughs> so you can coach a person when you're running beside them it's true but sometimes you need that outside eye Mm -hmm. So, is it possible that God wants to speak to you and help you in your spiritual life by using someone else in your life to speak into your life? Mm -hmm. Your consideration, friends. Uh, I think that's it, right? So yep. let's pray the rosary. Link right up there. Comment below what stood out to you and why, and we'll see you tomorrow.